where is the we put on the left? Okay, so you are recorded. If you need proof that you were here today for some reason, <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. So I want to introduce. Uh, we'll do Tom first since he's here. Um, first, we need to tell people to turn their their videos off and their and their. Yes. Could you turn your videos? And if you're if you're uh, in the Zoom meeting, except for Ray, could you turn your videos? And your audio's off. Your video too, please. You'll still be able to see. Carl, you need to turn yours off. The video? Kenny. Okay. So as he's doing that, if Tom could uh, introduce himself, I think you all know him, but talk a little bit briefly. We'll get into the history of the of the two drum corps in the program itself. So Tom. Well, uh, I'm Tom Burns. I first came involved with the drum corps in 1957. I graduated from college in uh, early June of 57. And the corps was on the street then. Now we all said that the corps started in 57, it didn't. It was organized in 1955. Now, uh, I'm thinking organized mean it was Dick Eschler's idea. He got a few field players, trumpet players together. I mean, hold on, it's like Ronnie Chasey, Nellie Blair, um, Tommy Stamp. And uh, so I I played trumpet in, in band, so uh, I was interested, got involved. And I think we had a few parades like Memorial Day and like that, not too many. And <clears throat> I have pictures, I'll, I'll spread them out later on the tape. I, I got a lot of stuff here. I've been, I don't know, secretary, treasurer, and president uh, through the years, and I've just accumulated a bunch of stuff, more than I thought I had. I went up in the attic, <laughs> found a bunch. But, uh, <clears throat> As I remember, our heyday was in 1963 when I was involved. I know they had a good year in 64, but I got married in 63 and things changed, you know. <laughs> You're not as straight as you used to be. Well, <laughs> tell you a little about 63. We went on a honeymoon up in Maine and uh, came back to New England, so forth, a couple of weeks. I never had that much time off in my life. So we're, we come back. My neighbor was Beatty Beardsley Phillips next door, where Jimmy Mann was. Then. She was our babysitter. We managed this time. Unbeknownst to us, Russ found out Sandy and Beatty and a few others organized a morning party, which is a Chevrolet morning. I know you might remember it. There's not too many here that remember it. Well, we're getting ready for a new rug coming down the next day in the dining room where we're working away. And uh, it became dark. All of a sudden, we heard two bangs. I thought something happened down cell. I run down cell. Everything was all ready to come back up. And uh, the bangs struck. The car struck up, but this could be the start of something big. <laughs> <laughs> And we looked out the back window, and the car was strung all the way across their backyard and marching towards the bush. <laughs> we couldn't believe it. We still didn't come to a little uh, Barb's sister and husband showed up at the window. <laughs> so things developed. There was a party. We ran out of beer. Uh, oh, who's the sheriff's son? Bill McBride, youngest, says, I know where we get some more beer. They went up to Blue Lake Kelly's. <laughs> Backing out, they ran over his goose. <laughs> By the driveway, all day. Anyway, we had a good time. Everybody enjoyed themselves. And I think that's the last recording of a chivalry in one day. They had a lot set up in the cops and everything. Um, 
Al Stanton, I remember the next day or in Rotary the next week, he said he talked a little about this. He said, I'm, I'm not sure if I want numbers for my neighbor or not. Are you across the street? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's there's other humorous stories. I'll put this out. Uh, um, I can explain it out there. But anyway, we I had I found a Buffalo Courier newspaper that shows we participated in the Bay of the Mist Parade. Now, this is an annual thing up in Niagara Falls, but they combined it with a New York State Farmers Convention all that week. It was the longest parade I ever been at. I don't know. Kenny, were you in that? Yeah. It was a fantastic parade. And uh, the rancher was one of the best senior drug book. And there was quite a few from all around. We were, Real pleased over that. And we went on to win the New York State Fireman's Championship two years in a row, I think 63, 64. Uh, and it's amazing the number of people we had. We had at least 50 at our high point in the core. And uh, it, it was an organization that I think was the best around for young kids with the exception of the junior police. Remember that? George Burns had the mm -hmm. junior police. Yeah. Nobody had any bad actions or anything. The only one that did was my brother, <laughs> Jim. He just got in his aunt's car. They hadn't been drinking beer or anything. He had Willie Boys and a couple of them. His car was loaded. And he just went too fast around the curb on gravel. And he ended up in Warsaw Hospital with quite a bad concussion. But he came out with it. So, um, okay. it, it, it was kind of a mixture of first older age, then younger guys got into it. So, so Tom, we're going to fill in some details. We're going to go in a chron chronology. Okay. Um, so there'll be times where we're going to fill some more in. I'm going to go to Ray for a minute. Ray, I'm going to click on, let's see if that's going to bring you there. Um, could you just give the little background of how you got involved in it? And then we'll start, we'll get the slideshow up and go through that. Okay. Can you hear me? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I first saw the Rancheros at the uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 1958 sesquicentennial thing in Nunday, 150 years old. That's the first time I saw the Corps. I was 13 at the time. And I said, boy, I'd really like to join that. But I found out I couldn't join until he turned 16. So I had to wait till 1961. I joined the Corps. And, uh, and then uh, we have a photo of the uh, 62 Corps. Uh, and you're, you're probably going to show that, Tom. And then uh, there's, a, there's a photo of the 63 Corps. The 63 Corps is when we took our first state title um, and that was down in Hempstead. I'm sorry, 63 was, I think, down in uh, uh, Horseheads. Uh, but anyhow, so that's uh, the early days. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, on our outline, I was curious as to uh, how the name came about. And, and I know the Ranchero is Spanish for ranchers. And, and I also, uh, Dick Essler, he was one of the starting people and, and became drum, uh, drum major. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. Tom he, yeah. was, he started it and was a drum major, and uh, he, he won a number of awards for the best drum major. And he was showy. He was, he yeah, was, he was a very good showman. He, he would uh, crisscross the street, bow down. Jesus, he, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was a natural. <laughs> And uh, anyhow, uh, back then, uh, you know, the Rancheros, everybody that prayed chords mostly had uh, 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 G bugles, G horns are bugles, and uh, they only had uh, one horizontal piston. Um, and uh, that's what we started out in the Rancheros. They had uh, gold finished lacquered horns. A lot of the other cores on the street had, had chrome, and but the Rancheros could only afford the gold ones at the time, and uh, gold colored. And uh, but anyhow, the uniform back then 
in, in uh, 61 and 62 and 63. Uh, well, 61 and 62, we, we basically had uh, the, the white silk blouse trimmed in black, uh, the black pants with a white stripe and uh, black and white cummerbund and everyone wore white bucks. It was an all male core. There was no girls in the core. And, and only the horn players and the drum players wore gaucho hats. The color guard wore overseas caps. So I became secretary of the core when I was a senior in high school in 62. And, and, uh, and I was pushing for, let's get uh, bell bottoms like Hawthorne. Everyone uh, liked Hawthorne, senior core. Uh, they were Spanish and they had bell bottoms. So uh, the core in 63 uh, invested in uh, bell bottoms with a white, white kick thing. And everyone wore gaucho hats. And it was mostly a, a, a deal of uh, finances. And, and the video that, that uh, there's a 22 second video. Can we that go to the slideshow, Ray? Do you want me to put that at the- uh... Yeah, if you want to show the video, that's, okay. I want to say yeah. a little thing about that video. Uh, Ellen Barber's father took that video in well, 1958. And it was, uh, it was like 65 years old. There's no, there's no uh, audio or anything like that. It's only 22 seconds. And... Let's start with that. All right. We'll go right to that. Let me get it. Let me get it up. There we go. All right. So now this is going to play through twice. The first one is the regular speed. The second time it's in slow motion. As Ray said, there is no audio with it, unfortunately. Okay, there we were wearing fireman's hats. That was before we had the cultures. What year did you say this was, Ray? I thought it was like 58, but Tom can clarify it if he understands better. No, I, 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 wasn't, I wouldn't be sure year. Yeah, Sounds I can't funny. remember, but I, I do remember uh, after seeing this, yeah, they, they did wear these uh, white uh, fireman cap type stuff because they didn't have the gauchos yet because uh, they were expensive, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, notice how the horns carry, carry the, there's time there on the end. Uh, I think the horns were mostly made up of sopranos, uh, French horn, uh, baritones. And uh, I don't know how many horns is back there, but... Uh, that was uh, what I saw in 58, as I remember. Well, I'll, let's, let's go to the next slide here. Okay. Yeah, that was a picture of uh, the Corps in 1962 in the winter, uh, in the fall of 62, or whatever. Um, that was taken in the, uh, the second floor of the village building. Uh, that's where we rehearsed in the winter. And then we also rehearsed in the... Uh, uh, down by, behind the school parking lot. Uh, that's that parking lot no longer exists. There's a there's a swimming pool here. But anyhow, this is the picture of the core in '62. Uh, uh, you can see the color guard is wearing the overseas caps, and the horns and drums are wearing uh, gaucho hats. Um, that's Russ Bonadonna uh, kneeling to the left, and then Gary Thompson, myself, and I could go down the lane uh, line, but there's a many that have passed away. And um, anyway, I, I thought that was a nice picture of the core. Is there anybody else in here who's in that picture? Yeah, there's some others. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know people, but I'm not there. <laughs> um, Do you Tom's in the picture and, uh, and I see that, uh, um, Nelson Willie is in the picture. He passed away. Bill Snyder is in the picture next to him. He passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Mann just passed away this last year. And, and I see John Underwood and, and uh, 
Teddy Saunders and, and uh, Jim Mann. Then there's drummers. Jim Vesicle has passed away. Um, I see Hugh Thompson. Um, I see uh, Ralph, Ralph uh, Watkins. I see a bow hanger on, on cymbals. Phil Naskin in the color guard. I see uh, um, uh, uh, Welch playing a bass drum. Yeah, but anyhow, uh, that was a, you know, not everybody shows up for the booth picture. We had uh, maybe uh, uh, 19, 20 horns that year. And, and we're all using uh, one valve horizontal piston bugles, gold finished. Uh, Russ, Russ and Gary uh, were uh, playing bass baritones that are a little larger. And me and uh, the guy next to me were playing a baritone horn. Uh, and then uh, there's two French horn players, Tom and Bob, I think. And then the rest of them are soprano players. We basically had a six part music, uh, three parts on the soprano, uh, a, a baritone part, a French horn part and a bass baritone part. So it was limited. And again, we only had the, the one horizontal uh, piston uh, other than the open notes. It was easy to play, it was either in or out piston in or out and you try to play all the notes that we had available but it was limited anyhow you want to go to the next one just so yeah the next yeah the next picture was uh 63 and that's the year we took our first uh, state title uh senior uh volunteer fireman's parade championship uh decasser uh drum major on the right of course he wore a white doctor hat and there's the horn line, basically the same horns uh, made up. We still had just the uh, single horizontal piston. Uh, and then the drum line uh, in the back in the color guard, and the color guards wearing uh, cultural hats. Uh, I see Dave Powers in there. Uh, and a uh, little note on the far left, uh, that's Arnie Dury. Arnie was in the Corps and uh, he went to Vietnam and he was uh, killed in Vietnam. Um, but uh, you maybe recognize some of the other players. I can go down the line, but uh, for, for the brevity of time. Anyhow, it, that was a nice shot behind the school that no longer exists, that parking lot. It's now a swimming pool there. But that was the year we won our first uh, state championship, all male core. Um, that's about it for that. Okay, the next picture. Uh, the core, see, uh, in 64, as Tom said, the core uh, defended its uh, state title. And I think that that's the they went down to Hempstead, Long Island, and, and, they, and they again won the, uh, won the uh, trophy, uh, state trophy. And then 65, I had I, I, I left the area. Uh, I had moved out to Seattle in 66, but I was in college and I couldn't participate in 64 or 65. I was going to college in the summertime. But uh, this picture here is when, uh, well, I don't know what happened in the years, uh, the late 60s, 66, 67, 68. I, I suspect the, the core was uh, some of the down years and they were, uh, anyhow, Tom can probably relate to more like that. But in 71, uh, the, uh, the fire department uh, kind of re re tried to rebuild the core and they opened it up to girls and the girls were in the color guard. They were also on the drum line and the, and then in the horn line. And this is in 71. Um, and I was living in Rochester at the time and I came down. Uh, Russ, uh, Russ was the horn instructor, him and Sandy and Joe Rizzo instructed drums through the 60s as I, as I remember. And, uh, but anyhow, this was 71. Russ asked if I could help with the horn line. So I, I came down and uh, volunteered my time. And uh, they had the brass horns. So I, I, I wanted to build up the uh, baritone line. And so I got a hold of some used uh, bass baritone horns to replace all the baritones. They project bigger or more and they're bigger. And, uh, and then we also got a gold uh, plated contra. And I think that was Nick. I can't remember Nick's last name. He played contra that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 
and he uh, uh, the contra is a, an octave lower than the bass baritones. Uh, so that's the first time the core ever had a contra bass, and it's carried on the shoulder. And uh, that was uh, the core back then. You can see uh, uh, Carl also was in the picture, or Joe Di Pasquale, uh, Al Barber, Connie, Connie, uh, Connie, um, uh, Connie Morris is in the drum line. Larry Twomley was the drum instructor, uh, and he's in the drum line, I believe. Uh, anyhow, that was 71. And uh, we took Western New York State that year. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, we didn't take Western New York. Uh, it was the following year in 72. And uh, and 72, that was the year that uh, that uh, we we took back this, the Western New York title from the White Savers. There were only a few uh, street corps existing at the time. Denzel White Savers, the, the Attica Harrow Layers, uh, the uh, those Wellsville Blue Devils. There was a Tritown Cadets Cascade, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Castile drum beats and stuff. So uh, anyhow, and that, in '71 they had the blue 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 on um, the black pearl drums, and in that earlier video I saw with Ranch Charles, they, they didn't have those yet, but to, they got those black pearl drums, which were nice, and uh, avid. Uh, uh, hein Evan Heinrich was the drum major. Uh, see, Mike Bearsley helped organize this stuff. He was in the fire department and, and Evan was his, uh, I think, uh, nephew. Evan was the drum major at the time. So that's all I know about that photo. Right. Just a little clarification what happened like between 68 and 670. Yeah. The disagreement with the fire department. Because the fire department owned all the equipment. Yeah, I know. There was some scuttlebutt, and a lot of the guys took the stuff over to Warsaw, and uh, I think his name was Dick Mack, but I don't remember. And Mike Pierce, mm -hmm. I think Hugh Thompson had to go to Warsaw and bring everything back. <laughs> oh, did not know that. We started up with this. We started with this. The year in seventy one. It would have been nineteen seventy when we all came. It all came back. Yeah. Yeah, so 71 was a rebuilding year. Uh, I brought some music into the core because they could play uh, more complicated tunes. Uh, and, uh, and then in 72, uh, I convinced the fire department to, uh, let's, let's get some uh, 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 a valve rotary uh, bugles and chrome ones, and, and they invested in it. So in 72, uh, there's a picture of that if you want to show that, Tom. Um, 72? Is that the next one? Yeah. Oh, you mean the uh, video? Well, you can show that. Well, the video here, is, the video is first. This, this was in 71. Again, Al Barber provided these. His father took this video. It's about a minute long. It shows us in the uh, Mount Morris Parade. And uh, this is 71. We saw the, the brass uh, bugles. Uh, just the one horizontal piston, no rotaries or slides or anything. And um, so if you want to show that, Tom, it's great. This will do the same thing. It'd be normal speed and then a slow speed so you can explain what we're seeing. That was single lining to the uh, parade. Uh, the new uniforms, they had black vests and a, and a red cummerbund. This is Mount Morris in 71. That's 52 years ago. Yeah, there's the color guard, girls in the guard. And there's the horn line and drum line. See our contrabass. There's Al on the end, Carl next to him. That's Dance with White Sabres. They're, they're our big competitor. They had chrome horns. <laughs> we had a timbali in the drum line, I see. I've been a timbali. 
There's Al, Carl. Yeah, nice video. 52 years ago. Yeah, they had the uh, black vest. Things were kind of neat. That's a black and that's actually a colored video because you can see the red, white, and blue. I don't know that core. I think that was not our school. Oh, okay. There's the guard, guard, guard yeah. girls in the guard. Drum line. And the horn line behind. That was the first year we played Black Saddle, by the way. There's Dansville again. In like junior high. <laughs> There's the Rancheros again. We played south of the border in 71 and Black Saddle. And uh, in 72, I, I, I brought in uh, You'll Never Walk Alone. <laughs> that video is 52 years old. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a, a shot of the, the 72 core uh, during winter rehearsal. Uh, the, the photo was taken in the, in the high school gym at the time. And you can see Mike Beardsley uh, holding the Ranchero flag, a girl color guard. We had more horns. This is the year we added the uh, chrome Chrome bugles. Uh, again, they they had a, a, a one horizontal piston and and one uh, rotary valve, which opened up uh, much more possibilities for music and stuff. And uh, we sported a horn line that year, you know, nineteen twenty horns, and had a good sound, nice balanced sound. Uh, guys in the drum line. Uh, there's Larry Twomley. I can see Phil Piper. Uh, uh, Donnie Essler, maybe. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, Gordy Gordy Strain on on bass drum. I see Doug Doug uh, Smith is in the core playing soprano. Uh, we added a, a, a mellophone that year as well, uh, a chrome chrome mellophone, and we we got a chrome contra. Randy Randy Morris is playing the contra in the back there. So uh, we had chrome horns, a valve, one, one piston, one ro rotary, and uh, great looking, great looking core. In fact, that was, this 72 was the year we, we regained the uh, Western New York uh, Pride Championship from Dansville. So the core was on its way. I think the next one switches. Yeah, this is a color photo. I think it probably in 72. It was, it's probably at, at, at some parade before the parade and not all the horn players there because it's kind of a small horn line. But you can see the, uh, the red uh, sashes that they wore and, uh, you know, and uh, girl color guard. That's Evan Heinrich, a drum major. Uh, and, you know, we were essentially a junior corps. Most of the kids were under 21. Uh, but, uh, you know, we competed in the, in the senior divisions because um, Mike, Mike Beersley would have walked with the corps and he was over 21. Mike has since passed away as, as well as Evan Heinrich. 
anyway, uh, there's that show that that picture there. That was seventy two. And anyhow, I that's if you want to go back to the uh, room. Uh, Back. Um, yeah. To which one? Oh, if you want to go back, show me. Uh, back. Roof. Back to box. The roof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm missing what you're. No, he wants us to go back and be part. Yeah. About the photos. Okay. Do you, do you want to go to the Ranchero or the Phantom Revival picture first? Well, well I wanted to explain uh, if you switch back from the photos, uh, I wanted to explain what happened in the uh, fall of 72. Um, All right, so I'll stop sharing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and what happened in the fall of 72, everything was looking great. We had new horns and uh, new uniforms. We were building up the reputation. We had good music. And uh, anyhow, what happened is uh, I was volunteering my time coming down from Rochester to work with the Corps and, and stuff. But what happened is the fire department, I guess, felt that I was going to try to take the Corps over or something. So they, they banned me in the fall of 72. And, and uh, um, I, I, I think they, and they, I guess they figured they just bring in, uh, Dick Bear was the music uh, band director at the high school at the time. And, and he was a volunteer fire, fireman. And I think they just figured they just bring in Dick to, to help instruct and do that stuff. And so, uh, anyway, but a lot of the horn players, uh, half a dozen of them or so, uh, they were disappointed and they, 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 uh, they left in, in March the 73 season with the White Sabres. Uh, I know Carl was one and Al Barber, and Craig Borges and Brian Borges and, and Joe De Pasquale and, and, and a bunch of others. They, they thought, well, we wanted to have have a good parade season. And that left uh, the, uh, the Rancheros uh, small in number. And uh, so they really, they went out on the street that year, I guess, 73, but it didn't, uh, it wasn't as successful. And, and they, you know, they, so they were kind of dwindling down and stuff. And, uh, and anyhow, what happened is uh, I, I uh, was disappointed at what happened. And uh, so in 73, I, 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 the the uh, the the uh, um, um, the Herald Air Somatica, they had uh, kind of disorganized and stuff. And I tried to go over and, and help them build up again, and uh, working with the horn line and stuff. And uh, I worked several sessions with them, but they just didn't get the horn turnouts. So uh, they said, "Well, I guess we can't make a go of it getting them back together." So I approached them and I said, "Well, can I?" Uh, buy your horns and so I purchased the horns and and I had this vision that I'll start uh, a core in the Nunda area again and and I did that I uh, I approached a lot of uh, well I approached uh, practicing in Nunda and um, because the fire department in a village is pretty pretty uh, powerful uh, they they knew the friction between the rancheros and, and all that so they uh, we couldn't practice there, so uh, I approached the uh, the uh, Dalton American Legion up in up in Dalton, and, and they they said, I said, can we practice at your hall, and and we'll we'll carry your your flag and stuff, and 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 represent you guys uh, sponsoring us. So they they agreed to it, and uh, so the course started building up, and. Um, uh, we 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 had the horns, chrome horns, and uh, they were with uh, still one one uh, one uh, horizontal piston and a, and a rotary, and uh, I I also got a hold of a couple of mellophones, the middle voice like French horns and stuff, and we had a a, a contra a chrome contra bass as well, so we started the core, and. Uh, and we we're getting good attendances. A lot of the guys that were playing with Danzo came to join. And if you want, we can show the uh, picture of the core in 74 when we took to the street and, uh, and actually uh, won the Western New York State Parade Championship. 
again uh, from Dansville. Let's see. Yeah, the seven, yeah, the red, the colored picture of the phantom. Okay, let me, there we go. No, no. Yeah, that was our first season. And uh, oop, yeah, that, that there, that was in 74. Uh, we had, there's 17 horns in the, in the photo. And uh, Dave Smith, who's passed away, who's the drum major. You see, we had a drum line of uh, tenors and snares, bass drum. And, uh, and Chuck, Chuck uh, Livingston played it. We had tritoms, uh, horizontal basses. And, and uh, anyhow, that's the bass drums. Uh, I, I, people will ask where the name come from. Well, I've always liked the, uh, there's a corps from Rockford, Illinois called the Phantom Regiment, Junior Corps. And I always liked them. And they were, they played classical music and things. And I always liked them. And I thought that's a cool name, Phantom. And then uh, because were, it was a revival of the corps at, in the Nunday area, I said, well, we'll call them a Phantom Revival. And uh, so that's where the name came. And we adapted the uniforms, uh, black, all in black, uh, we, we had the uh, Attica's, uh, I got a whole of the Attica Harold Ayers uh, Aussie hats with a yellow plume, their, their cummerbund sash, black trimmed in gold, and it got their drum line, uh, the, the drums you see there. And the girls wore the Attica blouses, the gold blouses, and they had black skirts, black shoes. We all wore black shoes. and. Uh, so the chrome horns showed up good on the, against the black uniform. So that was our first season. And uh, music wise, we played uh, uh, in the classical vein. I, I, uh, I had this chart that I redid and revoiced uh, of New World Symphony. We played Black Saddle, uh, one of the Ranchero tunes. And we played uh, a tune that I revoiced, uh, Hang Em High that Attica played and it had a, at the hang em, I had a kind of a James Bond uh, thing in, in the background and stuff. So it was kind of a cool tune. And then I had another chart that I introduced uh, called uh, um, uh, Make Your Own Kind of Music, a hit by the Mamas and Papas. And so anyhow, that was the four tunes we had um, in 74. And uh, we had a successful year, as I said. Uh, and the other thing is uh, to defray expenses, uh, we, we marched, uh, contract marched for several uh, fire departments in the area, primarily Perry uh, Fire Department. And so we were able to uh, make money that plus prize money and stuff and, and uh, to pay, pay bills and stuff and uniforms and stuff like that. And so we were successful in the 74. Um, let's see. Um, so uh, I explained, uh, you know, how we got, got going and, and the, uh, the style and the music. And um, our drum instructors, Larry Tromley was our drum instructor. Uh, I, I brought down uh, uh, a guy from Rochester uh, that I knew in the Crusaders. Uh, uh, Frank Michaels and, uh, and Jerry Hill was actually working with our color guard and uh, stuff like that. So that was a 74 picture uh, and 70, that was the only group picture we ever had at the core. Um, uh, and in 75, uh, we uh, wanted to play more music, different music and stuff. And um, so in 75, um, uh, I introduced uh, uh, some, some more music. 75, we played uh, um, Black Saddle, Hang em High. And I introduced Sing, 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 which was a real crowd, crowd pleaser, and uh, Land of a Thousand Dances, and uh, uh, a, a tune I put together that they call The Wind Mariah from the uh, 
Broadway musical and new movie, uh, Paint Your Wagon. And uh, so 75, uh, we, we, we played the, that music. And in 75, uh, I, uh, I wanted to mention that we, all, all the horns at the time we were using were G, G bugles uh, uh, with one horizontal piston and, and, uh, and rotaries. So they were essentially called GD uh, bugles with an F-sharp rotary. And uh, so, but what was going on at the time to get better intonation and stuff, um, uh, if you cut down the G tubing in the bugle, uh, I'm sorry, the D tubing with the, with the, with the, when the piston is, is uh, pushed, uh, if you cut it down to an F, a shorter length tubing, you could get better uh, intonation with uh, those notes uh, along with the F-sharp rotary. So uh, I took the horns up, all the sopranos and the, and the baritones, uh, bass baritones and the contra up in Dick, Dick Hoppy up in Rochester. And we cut down the horns to make them G, F, F-sharp bugles, uh, still uh, one piston, one rotary. And, uh, but it gave us better intonation and stuff. And, uh, and that helped uh, the sound of the horn line. I wanted to mention that. And, uh, and also in the 75 year, uh, we depended upon uh, uh, prize money and parades. And of course we had a contract with the Perry, with the Perry Fire Department, but uh, I, I helped start a, an organization called the PCA, the, the Parade, Corps Champ, uh, Parade Corps Association. And, and what that was, it was uh, a bunch of corps, parade corps got together and uh, they, they tried to convince uh, some of the, uh, all the towns in the area that sponsored uh, parades to, uh, to uh, increase their prize money instead of just uh, giving trophies and stuff. Trophies are nice, but they don't pay bills. So, so we tried to, uh, uh, make the towns in the area that had parades to uh, to uh, offer better prize money, and that was pretty effective. So prize money increased in the area parades, which was a good thing. And uh, so in '75, um, we we actually uh, went to uh, states that year and and won. So we we. Uh, won the state champion, pray champion, senior pray championship uh, again, uh, for the first time, I should say, uh, for, for the fan revival. And uh, that parade, I believe, was in Niagara Falls. Uh, anyway, the 76th season, briefly talk about that. We, uh, the horns were great, but uh, in fact, if you look in the display down there at the museum in the, in the, uh, in the glass case, uh, there's a, I, I donated uh, one of those G, F, F sharp uh, piston rotary cut down chrome horns. It's back there in the display, you can see it. But uh, we, we had enough money, we're making money. And uh, they, uh, we, we bought new sopranos and, and, and bar bass baritone horns, all chrome. And we had the mellophones, which were already, uh, Good horns, bell rotary, G, uh, F, F sharp, and the contras, which were cut down. We cut the contras. We added another contra, I think. So we had a bigger horn line, better horns, and um, we, we uh, uh, in 75, uh, so that was a good year. 76, uh, we, uh, that was the, the bicentennial of the country. 76, so uh, we added music, uh, we had a, 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 uh, um, a patriotic song for the country's bicentennial. It was a medley of American Salute, Johnny Kids Marching Home and Battle Hymn. Uh, I combined the, uh, the Black Saddle arrangement with the uh, Call of Wind Mariah uh, song into a a thing I call the Tom Mix special. We also played that year uh, the uh, song If by Brad. Uh, that was, a, I, I had gotten a hold of a Jerry Kelsey arrangement, redid that, revoiced it for the core. 
And, and we also played Land of a Thousand Dances, which was a crowd pleaser as well. So that was the music we played in, uh, in 76. And 76, uh, the, the, the core wanted to uh, have a different look. So they added a new gold trimmed in green cummerbund to the uniform. Um, we marched uh, solely for Prairie, Prairie Fire Department. And again, we won the Western New York State Trophy in 76. And we won our second New York State uh, Parade Championship Trophy, which I believe that year was in somewhere in Syracuse area in 76. And, and then in 76, uh, we had an all girl color guard. And, uh, and, I, and I encouraged uh, that maybe we could uh, join and play in the uh, winter color guard indoor circuit. So, uh, Jerry Hill uh, came down and designed a show. Back then, when you when you did indoor color guard shows, they were it was tape music, and the girls would perform their uh, show, uh, usually a, a five or six minute show indoors to a drill. And Jerry was the instructor. He was uh, the, uh, the he choreographed the drill. He he actually was a uh, commander of the guard. And we, we were in the circuit, in our circuit, and uh, I was very competitive indoor circuit. And uh, we ended up taking fourth that, that year, uh, first year out. Uh, Dick Copy was one of the judges, and he's still involved in indoor color guard and stuff like that. So it was a great uh, thing to do in, in, in the uh, fall of 76. And that just followed right into uh, 1977. Uh, that year, uh, we, uh, oh, I, I forgot to mention that, that color guard that we uh, sponsored, the indoor guard, Al Barber uh, designed the uniform for him. And if you look in that uh, glass case in the, in the museum, there's a sketch of the uniform. Um, the, uh, so we, we basically uh, added uh, a yellow cummerbund and uh, and, uh, and white gauntlets, which look cool against the black. And, and uh, they had the white stripe across the black in the front. And uh, it just it was a sharp looking uniform. So the uniforms in 77 were really, really good looking. And uh, uh, so the, and we played more, more complicated music. We played Arrangement of Bully, a, a, a Spanish song. Uh, Send in the Clowns, uh, and uh, some of the tunes from what we had before. And uh, anyway, we, we took states again in 77. And that, that year, uh, the, the convention was down in Binghamton, New York. I had already, uh, I had gotten married in 77, and, uh, and I lived down in Binghamton where I worked. And so uh, uh, I, uh, it was nice to, to see the, the core perform well down there. And, and I played all four years of the core as well. Uh, but anyhow, uh, there's some photos, a, a little four by five photos in that glass, glass case of the core uh, during that, uh, that parade when we won states again. So that was uh, the 77 year, look, everything was great. But because I lived in Binghamton, I couldn't get in, be involved as much with the core. So what happened is uh, uh, Doug Smith became the director of the Corps in '77, and uh, but the but the, the most of the members they 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 wanted to uh, merge with the Dansville White Sabers and and they formed a uh, a field field corps. And it's, it's it's very difficult to uh, to uh, uh, field a field corps. Because it, you know, you have to learn a drill and a show and all that stuff. But the kids wanted to do it, and then so the Dansville and the and the Phantom Revival, the White Sabers and the Phantom Revival merged to perform a core called the New Horizon. Uh, Carl Carl Esler uh, was involved playing with them, as well as L, I think Barber and and Joe De Pasquale and Craig Borges and and a bunch, and uh, and and maybe they could relate to more about what happened there. Uh, uh, they, the core merged. Uh, their, their colors were orange and black. They wore black Aussie hats and orange tops and black uh, pants and stuff. Um, 
But anyhow, they uh, they were successful that, that first year in 78 with the New Horizon. They took fourth, I think, in the uh, Red Carpet Association. It's kind of a minor league uh, a, 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 a field core association, uh, minor league to, I should say, DCA Drum Corps Associates uh, with Hawthorne and Redding and, and Hurricanes and all those guys. So anyhow, they had a successful season. Brady, Brady Ross uh, did the drill for him, I understand. And uh, they had a successful year, and they and I guess they they uh, also competed in '78, but I think after that they kind of uh, disbanded and stuff. So that was the end of the Phantom Revival and the, the Dance of White Sabers went in, in, in activity as well. And uh, so that's uh, basically what happened to the uh, the corps in the Monday area. Anyway, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions in that, if no, Carl. Let's, uh, we can take off the screen share. Okay, and then if there's, if there's some questions or comments or memories from here, plus the people who have tuned in, if you want to do, turn on your mic and your video, you can, um, if you have some questions to ask. But I know there were some comments from here. Or questions? Anybody? I can tell you what we played. Uh, we had kind of a revolving uh, drum corps, drum corps on review, and uh, it was kind of a money maker. We hosted one, Wellsville Blue Devils hosted one, and even Castile had their own uh, drum and bugle corps. They, uh, I remember it was the Castile Farmers, but uh, <laughs> they, they uh, had a different scene. Oh, the White Sabres went to Antonio, yeah. and uh, I can't find it right off. But anyway, uh, Drum beats. They call the drum beats. Cast yeah, cast out drum beats. They yep. turned into Tri Town. They were a field corps, Tri Town Cadets. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Junior Corps. Yeah. The Blue Devils are no longer from Wellsville. Attic is gone. Uh, the well, Whalen had a, a junior corps that started up, and I helped instruct them uh, their first year. Uh, but that was kind of it for the area. Attica was gone, and uh, well, yeah. we yeah. get, uh, it's it's a sad. I go up here and watch the uh, Memorial Day Parade. We used to have three, four cores, not particularly Memorial Day, but other parades we had. Yeah. And um, I had for a few years the job of contacting these cores and getting them to come. Mm -hmm. We paid. The, Money wasn't a whole deal, but uh, now there isn't even a only one tone of music in the parade. No, no high school bands, nothing. That to me isn't a parade. <laughs> I'm sorry, but anyway, here are some of the songs we played in '63. Where or when? Patriotic melody, the lonely bull. And that was quite popular. That that yeah. of course we had a Spanish tone. And then the theme from tonight, uh, solo by Ted Saunders, Bruce Goldhanger, Dave Powers, and Jim Van Sickle. And then Everything's Coming Up Roses, Lady of Spain, and this could be the start of something big. And I think we started to work on Malaguena, but I don't think that ever, we ever got yeah. it. Yeah, we didn't have the instrumentation back then. Uh, I remember when we played uh, in 62, uh, or 63, uh, Sandy introduced uh, Everything's Come Up Roses. And because we just were using uh, one horizontal valve uh, piston, uh, some of the horn, horns had to actually pull their slide <laughs> to get other notes. And uh, that gave rise, of course, to adding uh, rotary. But th they didn't add rotaries to the horns until 71. And. Uh, Dick Esler died when he was 64 mm -hmm. in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So the other other speakers can be seen because 
you got to change the view up, up there. Gallery, yeah, there you go. I mean, they'll show up now if they want to speak, I think. Yeah, Carl, do you want to take your mute off and have any questions? Well, the one thing that I, the one thing that I was going to add was uh, for those who marched at that time among us would remember this, but every parade um, was judged, and there was a, a if you will a judging zone, and uh, so we had to uh, you know make sure that we got our horns up at the right time to play whatever song we were going to play, and uh, there was generally speaking a music judge and a marching judge, and then. Uh, uh, after and that was usually at the sort of the grandstand for the parade where all the celebrities, if you will, from the local town sat. And then after we were all done, uh, we would all gather around waiting uh, uh, on the fairgrounds or, uh, or wherever it was for the prize, for the winner to be, for the scores to be announced. And uh, th that was such a dramatic uh, time for all of us, uh, waiting to hear what, you know, did we win the parade? Did we beat the White Savers? Did we beat, you know, uh, Attic or did we cast out or whomever? And uh, those were very, very exciting moments uh, in and of themselves. But I just saw, I thought I'd add that um, because that was a regular thing for all the parades that we did. Yeah, we always tried to uh, play on, at the uh, carnival afterwards, a little concert, standstill concert, and next to the beer tent because we knew there would be a lot of people there. <laughs> but that, yeah, that was, I agree with Carl. It was fun to do those those uh, those uh, concerts afterwards and wait for the prizes to be announced and stuff yeah it was uh, it was very uh fraternity type uh thing i enjoyed it did members have to get there and pay for and arrange for their own uniforms in no. the two cars no. how did that work no no as in the phantom revival uh the core had purchased the uniforms and uh, same with the ranch heralds. They were all owned by the fire department as well as the horns and drums. And so that, that wasn't a, I don't know, I can't remember if, if the Corps charged a, a, uh, a, a um, charged a, what do you call it? A monthly, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, I, I was in a, uh, Mike Beardsley's wife made our uniforms. And she made them. Yeah, right. Yeah. His wife, Winnie, designed those uniforms with the black vests and the cummerbunds. And they had long sleeve uh, white shirts and stuff. Yeah. And they had the rest from uh, one, from the old ranch hills, gaucho hats and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the, the bell bottom pants. And they still wore white bucks, white buck shoes, stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I was thinking of dues. I don't know if the course charge dues. Some course charge dues to belong, just to defray costs and stuff. But I don't think the Rancheros ever did, and the Ran and the Fenway Revival never did either. Charge dues, you know. So we, did, yeah. If the guys could come and play, we were just glad that the, we we could get the turnouts and the horns. And drums to attend, uh, and, uh, and for the enjoyment. You know. We had a contract with uh, Chile Fire Department. I think it was Ted Ray's, and boy, they attended quite distant parades that we were used to. I know. Yeah, I remember. Travel at the end to get get there in time. And Change the ticket. I think a few tickets were issued. <laughs> <laughs> how did yeah, you, most. Of, how yeah, did the course. To the parade. Yeah, that, I was going to say that the Corps uh, members uh, had to get to the parade on their own uh, through carpools and stuff like that, and uh, and then the, they would change uniforms. I call it a la carte. They change the uniforms. <laughs> they, they wore their pants and stuff. <laughs> they, they put on their uh, tops and hats and and all that stuff a la carte. <laughs> that was the way that things went except for the the long parades away i think uh, when they went to long island in 64 they actually chartered some buses to go down there for that the last couple of years in Ray charles uh we did get an old school bus from the school 
and oh. maybe your blood spiritually draw us to the parade a lot. Oh. Now that would help. It was an old beat yeah. up. Okay. Yeah, the members were younger and so they couldn't drive. But when I was in the Corps, you had to be 16 and people drove and carpool and stuff like that. And that's basically what the Phantom Revival did as well. Uh, carpool and you had to get there on your own. And uh, so just the way of life. Wait till the contract with the Air Force when come to you too. 60 seconds. I remember most of our parades were in Wyoming County. Yeah, yeah let me send. County of Polesville, Marysburg, yeah. Yeah. Hill. I mean, just way out there. Yeah. Uh, one note I wanted to add about the Phantom Revival <laughs> in 74. Uh, we went down to the Pike Parade and we actually put together a little uh, five, 10 minute, uh, well, it was five minute show. Uh, in, in the parade grounds. And, uh, you know, we, we had a nice little drill and it was, it was simple, but it was effective uh, as an exhibition thing after the parade. And uh, I remember Joe Di Pasquale commenting that, hey, we took the pike open. <laughs> remember that, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. It was usually the night after the horse pulls. <laughs> yeah. No, it was out on their track, and so we had to march around uh, different things. <laughs> but it was it was a little effective thing. We played our four songs, and uh, you know it was it was neat to do that. Okay. Any other questions? Memories, memories. <laughs> oh, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> Like you must remember the parades where we go through with Perry or Warsaw or somebody. And as soon as we got at the end of that, we were headed right back yeah. to, to the, come right through again with a different fire department. Yes. Yeah. We did that with the Fan Revival a couple of times. We marched through a couple of fire departments in order to earn more money. So we we uh, after we went to the judging area with the first fire department, we'd uh, go back and, and join up with another fire department, and come through again to earn some more money. <laughs> yeah, it was just a, a you know a financial thing, but the kids didn't mind. And usually uh, the praise we'd uh, go to the end of the parade, sing a line to the beginning, and then so that when the parade ended, we'd be, be all right there at the end, and we could all. Uh, get out of the uniforms and and and, and party, and do go to the carnival. That's what we did at, at the uh, fun days in two thousand and eight. Uh, and and, and I, if we had more time, we could talk about uh, how we uh, uh, did the uh, two thousand and eight bicentennial parade in one day. Uh, uh, the alumni members, but it's, it's too much for today. And so that could maybe be uh, one of the things we talk about in the our follow-up discussion, 2008. And we also have the film that we'll watch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what we'll do when we do it during the summer. We'll, we'll see some more. I, I have some extra CDs that my brother bought a bunch of them. He left them with me. I think I got probably six or eight that I'm willing to get rid of. And now I can't find them. I tried to find them today. But I've got them somewhere, but I'll bring them. Yeah, yeah. The so 2008, you can watch on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's out there. And and I, I got the DVD from 2008, and uh, I could, uh, you, you could extract just the portion of the uh, the alumni corps uh, going down the street. Uh, it's a couple of minutes long. And this is, this is the logo we put together <laughs> uh, for, uh, we had we had uh, 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 go we had shirts made up. Dave Powers organized getting uh, that logo put on um, uh, go uh, shirts, and uh, we had a great time doing that 2008 thing. I had, I had, uh, come back. I had, I I brought back all the horns from uh, my area out here. I rented a van and drove across the country. And the horns are still back there, and uh, but but there were all two uh, two valve uh, 
two piston horns. I got an example. These are the type of horns that uh, that, are, that we used. Uh, they're two two vertical pistons, just like a trumpet. And uh, the, the 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 two pistons, one is a, a piston, and, and the other one was what used to be the, the the rotary. So now the 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 bugle, the two valve bugle, looks like this. And uh, you know, I can talk a long time about the development of the of the bugle. <laughs> the ones you have in the blast display, all the brass ones uh, uh, that are shown are basically uh, uh, just a basic G bugle with no, no pistons or anything. And then uh, the chrome ones uh, are showing the, the one valve, horizontal valve, piston and a rotary. So if you look at that display, you can see the difference. What happened to the flags that you see in the pictures, the Ranch Herald flags and things? Do we um, know where they are? I think Esther Heinrich might have the Ranch Herald, but I'm not sure, but I think she might. Yeah, I think the Ranch Herald's after 73, all that equipment uh, was Mike, Mike Beardsley uh, had it. And, 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 I don't, and I think that's where all the uniforms have. Uh, and, and when we did the uh, alumni re thing in 2008, I, I know that they have uniforms because uh, Evan wore some of the uniforms from that era, uh, the, the, you know, with the vest and the, and the, and the, um, the bell bottom pants and stuff. And, uh, and when we went out in 2008, we actually just wore black slacks, black shoes, uh, long sleeve white shirts. And I brought back these uh, gaucho hats, and we had a red cummerbund that I had gotten a hold of, and that's that was our uniform in uh, 2008. It was it was uh, effective looking, and, and uh, we had a good presentation. The town went wild, I guess, when we did that that parade. And as I say, it's all recorded on DVD. We played Black Saddle, and, and a medley of. Uh, Call of the Bull and 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 Espani Kani, and uh, it was effective. I, I wanted to play more music, but there just wasn't the time. Some of the guys that that came back to play horns, they hadn't picked up a horn in thirty years and stuff, and uh, and they all had to learn to use the uh, two vertical piston horns, uh, but they did it quite well. Carl was responsible for mostly uh, getting getting through that. Uh, if you want to comment, Carl, that's great. <laughs> uh, well, I, I will just say that uh, uh, the participation, that uh, enthusiasm for all that in 2008 was amazing. Yes. Um, uh, the, you know, it, and here we started in the winter time. <laughs> yeah. uh, people showed up. It was just amazing. Uh, yeah. Great experience. Yeah, I brought the horns back in May. And in July, they had from May, end of May till July 12th uh, to uh, pick up that music and learn it and memorize it and play it and, and march it too, you know. So that was great. On the hottest day of the year. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned something about practicing back in the, with the Rancheros and the Phantom Revival. Let's start with the Rancheros. How often did the core practice? When did you, where did you uh, practice? Well, I, as I remember, probably we practiced once a week and it was always down on the school playground. Down yeah. There. yeah, we'd march around the parking lot there that doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, and sometimes down the street, Water Street and stuff like that. Whose building was you? One year we were told by the village board, no more. If you're going to practice there, you got to break teams. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get the guys up there all in step. That's not good for the rappers. Well. Yeah. <laughs> not for a 1990 building. Yeah. Um. <laughs>
So yeah. you practice all year round. Pretty yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we rehearse in the wintertime once a week. And then in summer, I mean, each uh, parade was a rehearsal and stuff. So we might meet, you know, uh, during the week before the parades on the weekends, Friday, Saturday. And, uh, but and, and as far as the Phantom Revival, we were up at the Adult American Legion. So we practiced in their hall and uh, did a lot of our stuff there in their hall. And then uh, we occasionally go outside and, and march on the streets in Dalton. Uh, you know, to get ready for praise and things. It worked out good. Huh? We heard Joe Rizzo to come down from the structure. Yeah, right. Joe was a drum instructor. Drum instructor, yeah. Yeah. And he also was a drum judge. I remember when we did the Phantom Revival initial parade in 1974 in Nunday. Um, uh, I, we, had, we had eight drums. Uh, eight, four snares and four tenors. And I told Larry Twomley, I said, put them all in one single line, eight abreast. And, and Joe Rizzo, he couldn't believe it. He, he, you know, he, he, he was a drum judge and, and he, it blew his mind to see those eight drums abreast. And you know, we, we took high horns that night for our first big parade and, uh, and the initial uh, inaugural uh, showing of the core with the, with the black shirts and black and everything. And, and uh, anyway, we took high drums, we took high horns. And uh, so that first parade in one day, fun days back then uh, was a big success. So the core had a good core in 74 initial year. I was gonna say the rest, and Sandy Van Dyne had a big party organizing, but Russ, what was it the crusaders yeah we played with the uh well russ and i originally uh, went up and we were playing with the gray knights up really? in rochester and then the gray knights merged in 64 with the irondequoit crusaders to perform the gray knight crusaders but uh yeah and then jerry and, and i want to say that gary thompson 60 this was 63 that russ and me and uh, ted saunders went up who played that year and uh, anyhow in 64 uh, Gary Thompson went up and played with the Ronda Quake Crusad Crusaders. And then in 64, the, the Grey Knights and the, and the Cru Crusaders merged and they took uh, nationals out in Portland, Oregon, the American Legion National Show. Uh, they beat all so, the big boys. Pardon? They beat all the big boys. You know. Oh yeah, we beat Hawthorne. They beat Hawthorne and uh, Yankee Rebels and stuff. And, and then uh, 72, I was playing with the Crusaders, me and Gary Thompson. And we took uh, nationals back in Chicago in 72. So Russ, Russ and me and Gary Thompson uh, have uh, taken national titles. <laughs> uh, Russ took one title in 65 and Gary took it in 65 and 72. And I, and I was there for 72. So uh, yeah, we had fun times. Russ Bonagano was my first Horn teacher and Ray Charles. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sandy's Charles. <laughs> His wife wrote the music. Yeah. Well, him and Russ, Russ and Sandy kind of did the music. And I was hoping that Sandy could tie in today, but she's down in Florida and uh, I guess she, she doesn't do Zoom, so she didn't join us. Uh, and she acknowledged it this morning, so she may be on the. I oh, list, so I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, well, if, if you're there, Sandy, you know it'd be great to hear you, your your memories. Uh, I know uh, Jim Burns, Tom's brother, was going to join from Mississippi, but I, I don't think he made it. I don't know. <laughs> How do we get to the to the? Oh, well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Chats over here are participants. Only said eight participants. That doesn't really make sense. Maybe there are only eight. Well, if they have questions, they can flick on their, uh, on their uh, thing. Uh, hands up thing and, and ask a question or.
Do we have anyone else who would have some comments or memories or questions? Okay. Well, as we were talking, we'd like to do this again in the in a panel discussion in the summer and videotape it and talk about personal experiences. And it would be the panel would all share. And we'll also, we know that there's some scrapbooks and some things, and we would really love to be able to scan and have that material. And we'd run a slideshow uh, composed of those, fo those photos. I know that there's some wonderful ones out in the Phantom Revival. Wow. So if there's nothing else, I think we would like to give our Tom and Ray uh, a hand of applause. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> I could talk all day. <laughs> and, and really, it's really nice to see a lot of former members here. And so if you do have any materials that we can make arrangements for you to come so we can scan them and share them, it'd be wonderful. Yeah. And you find the flags, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm planning on coming back there for my 60th high school class reunion. So I'll be back there this summer. Uh, I know in August, definitely. Uh, so perhaps we can coordinate the, this follow-on while I'm back there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Oh. And there'll be some things sound. We'll have stuff out. There's a family revival scrapbook out there. And thanks a lot, Ray. Yeah, sure thing. I'm glad to join. Thanks to everyone who joined. Hi, Ron.